We have ruins of civilization all over the earth. It's right in our faces that something devastating came and wiped everybody out just about. It's right there in our faces. We have become so passive we can't see that anymore. The temples are constructed to keep time. But to keep time of what? Of a certain season that will be upon mankind. When mankind would once again forget all the ancient things. Which is why we were advised to consider the ways of old. It's almost like in the Bible God was telling us, you guys may want to educate yourselves in my true word to understand that nothing will go undone and everything is coming back again except that this time is the last time. The bull, some of the iconography that you see in some of these ancient temples represented planets. They know that because of the archaeological digs and, and some of the um, documents that they were able to extract. There was something so devastating that they were highly concerned about letting their offspring know what was coming. They didn't desire any of us to go through what they went through unprepared. You know what? In all these civilizations, they ultimately said the only way to prepare is of your soul. See, they all got it when it happened. That's why you have writings where it says, forsake earthly goods and save the soul. Now, why would that come? from the natives who were here in America to forsake earthly goods and save the soul. Why would they mention these lights in the skies that people would report for many generations? They said two generations. People would report about lights in the skies and they would have encounters with other beings, but they would not know what they were. They also said that in the earth, some of the things that were in the earth would come above the earth and people would have these sporadic encounters, sometimes deadly, sometimes not, but that nobody would know what they were. Something is coming. These things are building because they always build up right before humanity is about to be just extinguished from the face of the earth. They are collectors of a sort. But see, our mindset is so steeped in this world without anything supernatural. It's even hard for a person to, to believe in a miracle these days. It's hard to believe that Jesus walked on water. That's very difficult for people to believe because we're so steeped in tangibility that we deny many parts of the spiritual realm or we call ourselves experts in the spiritual realm of which nobody can see the spiritual realm. Not yet. But you have a lot of people who dabble with it and they have no idea what they're doing. They're talking to lying spirits on the other side who trick them into believing certain things. But then we have this one thing, the dead in Christ will rise first. I looked into this many years ago and what that looks like is over the course of many years. I believe the count was almost a hundred years, a hundred to two hundred years, something like that. But then of course the last fragment of the generation, a lot of people who once lived in the earth would then start to be seen all over the earth. In the book of Baruch, they call that the attack of the Shadim or the return of the specters. So these are like disembodied spirits of, of personalities that were once on the earth who could have done horrific things, but they would be back on the earth again in a different plane, of course, but certainly beginning to interact with ours until one day everybody would see them. So that means everybody who's sleeping on the earth would then awake and be on top of the earth, which means a flood. Can you imagine? Many, many years of people, all of a sudden, they're in spiritual form. They didn't make it to God. They didn't make it to the uh, Father. They didn't make it there. But they're going to be left in a type limbo awaiting judgment, but they're interacting with you. Can you imagine that? You're talking about a lot of people seeing ghosting and, and creepy things. And now, people can sit in denial all they want. Something is taking place with this. I believe that God purposes all things. Even television is purposed. And what does it indicate? It indicates that man is having encounters with something. They don't know what, but something. What it indicates to me is we're very close to a time, a time of the greatest transition, all of human history, in the history of the earth. And be reminded, Jesus said, these times would be like, unlike any other time before it or after. That's astounding. You do occupy incredible times, but you're also going to have incredible resistance. Satan is fighting tooth and nail to tamper with your faith. How does he tamper with your faith? By causing you to act against your fellow human beings. Listen to me. We're of the human family. Let's go ahead and, and, and close that one up. We are of the human family, right? Forget about the chimeras and dogs and all this other stuff. We are of the human family. God made us in his image and his likeness. And if we are truly like our father by way of the soul, then the most important thing to us in our lives is another human being. So listen to me, folks. Listen carefully. Anybody who would place something else over another human being, something is wrong internally inside them. If you're one of those ones that would put something above your fellow human beings, you've got some work to do. 
and it's still time. Don't squander away that time, but make the correction internally. Because if you truly love something above what God loves, above all things, something is wrong with you. If you put something before another human being, if you're not willing to sacrifice things of yourself for the sake of another human being, and you agree with the excuses coming from darkness, you've got some work to do. We've got some work to do. If Jesus were to come back right now, we're not ready. If he would come back right now, we wouldn't make it. You do know that. I know it's good to think, oh yes, we'd make it. No, we wouldn't. There are some incomplete things. And how many years has God given us to straighten up these things in our lives? Look how long we've been adults. My goodness, and what are we doing with that? Let's be honest with ourselves. All the warnings are in the New Testament, the Old Testament. God's encouragement to do what though? To purge ourselves. To really begin to look deep inside and say, nope, this doesn't belong in me. This is the temple of the Most High and has no business here. If you really think of yourself as a temple housing something very holy, you're not going to allow these earthly ideologies to be put in the temple. It'd be like playing a sci-fi movie in the house of God. And that sci-fi movie was a mockery of the Father's kingdom. That's not good. Now, of course, I haven't read the scriptures that really stomp on your toes. One of the scriptures states that if you hate your fellow man that's made in the image and likeness of God, then not only is the love of God not in you, but that in fact you harbor and do hold close to you the liar's thoughts or Satan's thoughts or his concept of ways. How many times have we been wrong about the character of a person? How many times? Simply because of, that's just like if you take some of these political leaders, they tell you who they are every single day. And if you've been around them, you know who they are. Some are grotesque. Some are simply lost. Some are fighting for a good cause, but their good is not quite holy like yours. Some of them love the Lord deeply. Some of them can't stand religion. The great majority of them are twisted in certain ways, but they're still of the human family. Those who are human, they're still of the human family. You guys care to know what happens spiritually in this world, why things are falling apart the way they are, what God said, what happened? God said something in the Bible, and he said something would happen because of us. Because of his children, the end times are marked by us falling away. Keep that in mind. Nothing extraordinary is going to take place till there come a falling away first. Why do we have to fall away first? Because we're the ones that abandon our posts, that start doing as the world does, and darkness comes in every place we're not. So many of us must be, we're going to be fooled first. That's a frightening concept, isn't it? But it's much more than a concept. It's going to take place. It is taking place right now. Part of my heart says, you know, can we stop people? Because that's disheartening to read that. That many will fall away. That hurts. If you care for your fellow man, you don't want your fellow man to fall away. But they are. Do you guys know that most of America is, is arming up right now that gun sales were? That people really expect what has happened in the Ukraine to happen right here in America? Do you guys know that? Do you know what's forming right in front of your eyes? Do you know that um, many Christians have now, that, it, that something is happening with the Christians likewise. They're shifting. It's almost like their stability is being challenged. I hope that you guys are not like that. But there are many Christians out there who don't have sure footing. You can hear it in their speeches. You can hear it in their words. You can hear it in their sayings. Even in their prayers, starting to reveal a frustration, also an anger, an incontentment, all the things God said we should have purged from ourselves. But we didn't do it. But we can. There's still time. Still time before the earth actually feels major effects from a set of very bad events. Still time. Still time to sow that seed of love. Still time to forgive those who have offended you somehow. And there's still time to break away from that entirety, from that, from the entire spirit of offense. There's time to break away. You don't have to occupy that space because God was very direct in what he said was coming. I'm going to read something to you guys to, to remind you of something, a sober truth. Now, also, before I read this, the Lord required us to be of a certain heart when he returns. Why would Jesus leave these instructions to us? Why would he perpetuate the word to this time? Why would he do it for such a long time through the course of many generations? Why? Why would he tell us to get ourselves ready to purge ourselves and not be a part of the darkness? To not desire and crave that? To conquer the flesh by way of the spirit? Why would he tell us to secure ourselves within him? He told us about God pruning us, cutting pieces off of us that do not yield a thing. He also said he would cut people off that do not yield fruit. Only the Father can do that. Nobody else can. Jesus laid out what God is doing at this time, what his charge is at that time, and what our place is during this time. But if we're not sure, if we're not careful with all these stories in the world, we're going to be in trouble. Listen, this is about salvation. 
Damnation is in eternity is unthinkable. This is about salvation. There are some things we are to conquer here. Everything in your life is purposed. But we can't stay stagnant in the same portions of life, going around in circles, having a victory one day only to fall prey to the exact same thing we were delivered from again and again and again and again. This vicious cycle. Time for us to go up to another level, wouldn't you say? I can, I can feel that call so strong. It's almost like the Lord is saying, come up here, hurry up. Many of you feel that sense of urgency. You can't place it. You know that there's something you must be doing. Many are hunting frantically to see what standard they have to meet because the time draws near, draws close. We see the wars that have broken out. I'm going to go ahead and call them wars. They're about to turn twice as deadly anyway, right? It may be a fiasco in some degrees, but people are dying. People are being maimed. Children are being hurt. Now, I do thank God that I went over the children's statistics. and They're unbelievable. God is so merciful. He knows precisely what he's doing. But how long will he hold back things because that's precisely what he's doing? Many people think that, well, there's no calamity has come yet, Mike. No big one. Yes, it has. We've had big calamities, but the father is holding the big ones back. They should have hit already. If he takes his hands away from holding back those things that will most certainly form in the same hour he removes his mercy, it's the same hour cities will burn. And more and more, the populace, they're not glorifying Christ. They're not lifting up the name of the Lord. That's not what they're doing. They're utilizing the Bible to further their own lives. They're not doing the right thing. The good are out there suffering. They don't get everybody's attention. I'm just telling you the truth. They don't get people's attention. People are, there's something. If you don't use discernment in these last days, you will be tricked and fooled. You're going to be coerced into doing things that you will have never chosen by yourselves to be part of. How many people are tired of having the same problem over and over again? You don't know how to get out of that vicious cycle that you're in? Think about that. How many times have you performed the same thing over and over again, only to have the same results over and over again? You try the subtle changes, prayer, and everything else, then it all falls apart at the end. See, God's children need to understand the process of that and finally get free of it. I'll submit to you some. I'll, I'll give you something right now for free. You ready? The moment you no longer need certain elements in your life, when you no longer need discipline in certain areas, you won't have those circumstances. Your Father in Heaven wants you free. Your Father in Heaven wants you totally redeemed. We have circumstances and these issues in life because we continue to think that we're right, that we're handling it the best way. In fact, when it comes to the Word of God, many of us are guilty of this. Sometimes we want what we think about the Word of God to be right. And you have to ask the question, do you want to be right about the Bible? Or do you want your Father in Heaven to be absolutely 100% correct about the Word of God? I can tell you right now, I don't want to be right about Scripture. I don't want to be right. I don't want God to make anything I think to come to fruition. I don't want that. I want God's Word to be true. You know where you're talking about Scripture and everybody joins in and everybody's trying to explain to the other what they think about the Scripture. All of that is nonsense. Because all that is is a demonstration of how much we want to be correct. There's a problem in that. And the same people that just want to be correct, we, we, you know, normally when you're in that cycle, you start covering up for these things that nobody can ever see. Nobody's ever going to know. But you know that things are falling apart in your life. We, uh, listen, we need to put a halt to that. Your life should be of the greatest stability you've ever known, certainly in this time. This time is for instability of the world, not for you. This is your time. It's your chance, your opportunity to raise a standard yourself, to finally get out of these vicious cycles in life, to be an overcomer every single day of your life and to have that victory and to understand all elements of your life. It's right there in the Word of God. If we desire to understand the Father, and not desire that the way we believe in the Word be the standard of all people. I don't want the way I believe in the Word to be the standard of all things. I have no desire for that. Many people are not like that. And it's time, listen, it's time that we help one another. When you see somebody saying, well, I'm right about this scripture and everybody else is wrong, you got to jump in there and say, well, let's uh, pray for humility. Let's pray for meekness. Let, let's get better at this so we're not, we don't have that attitude. You guys know what it's like. There is a direct suppression of your freedom when anybody would get around you that thinks they're right. You know what that feels like. It's time for us to put a halt to those things and purge those things out of us because you're bound to see the unbelievable. Nothing's going to hold back what's coming to the earth. Nothing. God is the one that's holding things back right now, but they're coming. They're going to come fast. It's going to be furious. We have some work to do. There are a lot of people in the world. They're growing, but they're so entangled with the world right now, they cannot see the goodness God has bestowed upon them. We're in the days where the word of the Lord 
is going to be hard to find. It's going to get harder and harder and harder to find. It was always going to be this. There's a pattern in the Word of God. Men would perceive of the truth. And they would embrace it with great joy. We knew when calamity was going to come because many would receive that truth with great joy and then they would begin to rebel. Instead of receiving of the Word, they would challenge the patriarchs. After the challenge, they begin to plot against the patriarchs. Then they lied on them. Then they set false witness against them until God removed them. When they were removed, that's when people mourned and cried. And that's when the heavy stuff fell. They had no guidance during those times. They got so used to wanting. They just wanted to hear good news. They did not want to hear the word anymore. Just good news. That's not being sober. If you want to hear just the good news, like how you're going to prosper, how you're going to be okay in five days, this, that, that, that's not the truth. You know what the truth is? Satan is after your soul. He will never stop 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He is after your soul. And every area of your life you fail to cover, he's going to squeeze into the cracks and begin to just obliterate whatever you set up. Because if you fail, if you neglect what God has put in you to watch over, that's an act of rebellion. It also means you're taking your salvation very lightly. And there is a consequence to that. A big consequence. That means when you become Charlie Brown, you say, well, it's me. And you start a ruckus and start cutting up. You're inviting devils into your life. And we live in the days where they're tearing people to pieces. You know, just like these animal attacks. There are more animal attacks that have taken place this morning. But more than that, what about all the attacks upon the babies? What's happening? When babies get assaulted too much, something has certainly changed. And it's that absence of Christ in those areas. That's where darkness flourishes. Darkness didn't, it never flourished in the house of God. It would challenge it, but it did not flourish. It flourishes in the world. It flourishes in worldly ideologies. It flourishes in pride. All of which God said, purge yourselves up. That I'm right mentality. It's time for those things to end. A darkness will rise on this earth even higher than what it is. The world's not going to look like this. 300 days from now, the world's not going to look like it is now. It's not. But I'll tell you what, if I'm still here during that time, those will be the joyous times of my life. It'll be the consummation of things. God is going to give all of his children eyes to see it, those who really love him. Now his rebellious ones, this time will wake them up finally. It has to be rough because some people don't believe anything. It's just like um, if a person has a cold. They think they have a cold and you say, you know what? You got to go look at that. That may not be a cold. Oh, it's just cold. I'll be okay. That's what they'll say. Why? Pride. They know it all. Three days later, that person can't even move. They can't breathe. They can't walk. Somebody stumbles in the house right when they're about to take their last breath. They call the ambulance. They get them O2 and everything else. And then they find out that the person had pneumonia, very bad case of pneumonia, not just a cold. And it could have killed them. They had organs shut down and everything else. They did not know. They did not recognize the severity of the issue. And once the symptoms hit, you know that the full-blown disease is going to take its toll shortly thereafter. But you just don't know when. You'll know disease by the symptoms. By the symptoms, you know something is not right. Well, let me tell you something in the earth. Something is not right. Something is not right with the weather. Something is not right with the heavens. Something is not right with the human body in res with respect to the magnetosphere. Something is not right with the human mind and the way we process information. Small things are, are, are beginning to be a challenge. Something is not right. We are seeing the symptoms of something much larger that's already here. We just don't know when it's going to strike. And my firm belief is God's grace and mercy are holding things back. It should have taken place already, but it hasn't because the Lord is holding it back. When the powers of the heaven are shaken, they're no longer stable and everybody's going to feel it. You think they boo people out of Japan? No, they're not. What about Taiwan and their other issue? Coastal cities have an issue right now today. You think they're going to do anything about it? No, because everybody's fixated on the Ukraine. Everybody's minds are going a thousand miles an hour. They're missing some of the more permanent things that are happening. Do you think they're telling anybody in South America, hey, look, you may want to relocate right now while there's still time. You think they're talking to anybody in Mexico and certain provinces where the ground is just going to totally give way? All the sinkholes are coming back with a vengeance, it would seem. The water has been evacuated from these large cavernous places that are simply going to collapse in on themselves and take things down with it. Who's inspected those things? Don't become high-minded. Continue to rely upon the Lord, and the Lord will be your foundation. You start bragging on yourselves. If you become evil because of an evil act of somebody else, you've been compromised. You can't do that. 
And folks, one of the keys in life is to not be compromised by darkness. You cannot fight the devil with the devil's weapons. That's why the Bible says, when somebody does evil to you, return love to them. Do not do evil for evil, because that starts a vicious and perpetual cycle, and you will lose every single time. You're not here to lose. You're here to be victorious. It's about to get very wacky, very challenging, and hopefully you guys will not lose your footing in these times because all these people who are stuck in truth, well, I hate to say it, but like a traditional mindset, they're going to face things that are just unbelievable. You know, it's kind of like in the service, I probably shouldn't say this, but there was one time in the service when we were told not to engage. It, this is no joke. We were told not to engage any upright animals that we saw. Now, we were looking at each other like, what in the world is this? But we were told not to engage. By all means necessary, do not engage any upright animals. And that's the weirdest thing you ever heard of in your life. Well, come to find out, this specific area, I believe they were, you know, at the time I thought they were primates. There were primates out there. But we were told not to engage them. In fact, it got pretty bad. We were grilled, basically, and, and warned and everything else not to engage and not to really talk about it. Of course, that has been lifted. It's still an uncomfortable thing. And the reason why is because there are things on this earth that are clearly they're on the earth. They don't really interact with mankind, but they're all over the place. And there are people who have been deeply traumatized because there was a guy out there who was scared to death. I mean, this guy was scared to death. He was a he was a pretty sizable guy, but he was scared to death. He obviously he came across something that uh, it just really rattled him. Right, kind of broke down his. He was a Christian too. He said, but it it kind of broke up his faith. Now, what do you think about that? Imagine a guy who is a Christian Christian who's in a remote area, you know, on a hunt, just doing his regular thing, but something shakes him up. So we're not talking about things from the sky, no. Something shakes him up so bad that his faith is tampered with to a large degree. Because at that time, he just kept crying and saying, I don't know what to believe now. I don't know what to believe now. I can't, who do I talk to? You know, it's like this weird rule that if you see something strange, you have to go tell somebody. But that's weird to me but anyway that's how people are but it was pretty shaken up later on uh, two of our guys had some type of encounter that really shook them up too now i did i see it no i didn't i just saw the aftermath of how shaken up these guys were and their faith was truly tampered with it was really tampered with in fact one of the guys couldn't go he he, he was just done he was finished he was out of his mind what do i believe they saw i believe they saw something that's indigenous here, but that they're all over the place. They watch, basically. Does the Bible ever talk about these notable things? You better believe it. Listen, anything of significance that happens in the earth, it, it's in the Bible. The encounters are also all throughout texts that you can read. They've been here for a long time, but they're more like guardians. These things are like guardians. And then come to find out some writings were actually excavated. And these things have a job. They're not stupid. They have a job to do. They have been clothed um, that they're that they can stay wherever they are, and, and they don't really, they don't really, um, you know, they're not running around vulnerable. No, they're well equipped to live within the elements of the earth, and they have a job to do. They know, according to this text, they know the difference between those humans who are devoted to salvation and those who are not. And nothing can save another person from them. But also, if they are to guard a person, nothing's going to breach the security they offer. And they're in the earth by the droves. In ancient writings, there were six different tribes in the Middle East that um, during the time of the flood, that you had a bad set of these things and a good set of these things. And the bad set were banished. Uh, the good set were distributed throughout the earth, and they watch over the children of men. It's almost like God appointed his creation to watch over certain things of his creation that nothing go outside of the bounds of what he has decreed. It's an amazing thing, but I know it. People are going to face an element of life they're not used to on many different levels. Now, I do not subscribe to a lot of the things that you guys have heard. I just don't subscribe to that. But I do often wonder if these guys are a lineage from a long time ago, which was mentioned in the Bible of people who were 
covered with hair from head to toe. The Egyptians talked about it. The uh, Native Americans, of course, here talked about it extensively. They were the ones that used to keep the giants in certain areas. Giants could not get past them, put it that way. They were much stronger than giants, but a little smaller than giants. And the giants could not overpower them. In America, there are tons of ancient stories that maybe you've not heard of, but that um, some of the founders that came over to America had to deal with them. They even used to cohabitate with them until there was a type of, uh, they would play rough with people or something like that. And um, they were so incredibly strong that they would easily destroy somebody and not really mean it. And those were the mischievous ones. But anyway, elements like those, things like those are going to begin to resurface all over the place, all over the place. And people are not going to understand what they saw. The sad part is, for example, in COT, our centric focus here is the gospel of Jesus Christ. But when you start talking about subjects like that, they face ridicule, scoffing, and everything else, of course, because people don't believe it. But everybody who's encountered uh, one of these things, their life has been forever altered. And it's, it's something how the Bible speaks of things like this. But do we really pay attention? Because God said they're all coming back in the last days, all of them. They're going to come back. In the last days. So things like this are going to be numerous. They're going to be detrimental to a lot of uh, folks who are still here on this earth, but also quite deadly to others because they won't hesitate to carry out the commands of Yahweh. And oh, by the way, I did hear on more than one occasion, they could say that quite clearly, Yahweh. Anyway, they've increased in number. Do you guys know they did a survey in a very specific set of mountains, a satellite survey, and they were looking for uh, DNA traces of not those, but of, you know, general species to get an idea. Well, guess what popped up? Something in between gorilla, chimpanzee, and another piece of DNA were found in so many different places that they estimated at least 100,000 have to be concentrated in this one area. If one of those things has the power of 50 men, my goodness, what is 100,000 going to do? What's going to happen with that? Well, let's read. Let's read the book of Enoch. I'll get back to that, because that kind of goes with this. Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spake, and sent Uriel, the son of the monk, and said unto him, Go to Noah, and tell him, In my name, hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on. And now instruct him that, that he may escape and seed by being preserved for all generations unto the world. And again the Lord said unto Raphael, Bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into darkness. Make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudael, and cast him therein. And place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever. And cover his face, that he may not see light. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast in fire, and heal the earth, which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, right? That they may heal the plague, that, and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. Let me pause. You see that? It says, God is saying, heal the earth, which the angels have corrupted, and proclaim the healing of the earth, that they may heal the plague, and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. By the way, the sons of the fallen were the men of renown in the earth, the, the well-known men of the earth in the, you know, men of the Pantheon, Greek Pantheon, some of the Roman writings, the Egyptian notable kings, some of those kings were supernatural. That was because some of the busts that are in Egypt, they were like charcoal black and they had elongated heads. What they didn't disclose was that these guys, two of the pharaohs are 17 feet tall. How come they didn't disclose that? How can you be 17 feet tall? Anyway, something else was going on back in that ancient world, which is why they worshipped the pharaohs as gods. And it began with these things, with the sons of these things, right? Now, what you may not know, I'll solve a mystery for you, and I highly believe this. In the book of Daniel, it says, They shall mingle their seed with the seed of men, but they will not cleave one to another. During this time, the watchers saw the, the women 
and they took unto themselves wives, and they bore giants, right? The offspring were giants and men of renown. So you had some people that were well-known, some were giants, but they also corrupted creation, and creation yielded some giants, giant animals. I believe those were dinosaurs. I don't necessarily subscribe to carbon dating at all, nor the dates that people have tacked on to when the dinosaurs lived and these balloon numbers like three billion years old and stuff like that. I don't, I don't believe that at all. I do believe that nature was corrupted to a high degree. And because it was corrupted, in that corruption lie great sins, temptations, knowledge, all sorts of things. And truth be told, like the library, they found about how to interact with dinosaurs, which means they lived in the time of men. Uh, some of the cowboys had biographies that came over here and established uh, places in the U.S., and they talked about dinosaurs. As of late two weeks ago, for, for about the 50th, Time. There's been some sort of upright running bird lizard thing running. People are catching them all over the place. No feathers. Very tall. About seven and a half feet tall that lurk in the outer skirts of places. In Alaska, there are too many people who will sit there and say, yeah, we were on a bus and then the whole bus stopped and all of us saw it. There was a dinosaur that walked right across the road. Now, why would they say such a thing? Now, they all could have been exposed to some weird gas. Yes, but they've collected too much evidence. Right. It's very if any of that evidence got out, well, then that disproves a lot of what the government has been raising money for. And if that happens, well, they're going to be in trouble. Let me continue to read. So Azazel, he's being jailed. The earth is being healed from the plague that was brought on by the by the uh, these things. And God desired that man be carefully handled because knowledge had been given to mankind, which would it just totally corrupted them. It's kind of like if we knew all the mysteries of the Word of God too soon, we would utilize the Word of God in a very strange way, probably to our benefit, but that we would uh, blaspheme the Word by trying to manipulate things through what we see. That's what would happen if your understanding were open to the entirety of the Word of God too soon. God desires us to learn things, but be good stewards as we learn. If you're given too much at one time, you could kill yourself and other people with it. So man's pursuit of knowledge is a hunger that was established long, long ago. And it still exists, not within every person, but certainly within those who uh, deem themselves smart or academically adapted. And, well, that's what the world likes, don't they? They like that stuff. So, um, but God wanted the earth healed. And so he said, and proclaim the healing of the earth that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through all the secrets, things that the watchers have disclosed. You know, as soon as they found out that they could split the atom, they made the atom bomb. They didn't make power systems where everybody could have electricity for free. They didn't make these small units that corporations used to use that were nuclear, or that would power a building for many, many years at minimal cost. That's not what they did. No, they made a bomb. They were destroying each other with the technology they found because Satan teaches people to have a target. You know when somebody's been a student of Satan inadvertently because they always have a target in their lives. They always have someone that they are totally against. That is satanic because God never does that. But those things do, though, you know, those people do. Sharing information, sharing knowledge too early, men corrupt themselves by killing each other. Some of that knowledge uh, was inclusive of witchcraft, of the resolving of enchantments and enchantments. All these different things were taught to humanity. Makeup is a teaching of Azazel. That's so funny, because that was also found, uh, was it two and a half miles below the surface of the earth? Madame Zazel taught people, taught women how to seduce men, how to enhance their looks with makeup, and told them exactly what desires a man would have upon seeing a woman with makeup. So Azazel taught women how to seduce men through jewelry and makeup. Isn't that interesting? So jewelry and makeup was a teaching of Azazel. That seems outlandish. The problem is there's authentication that the writing they dug up, it was, it was very old. Extremely old. I'm not going to say the date because people like to dispute dates. But uh, let's just say it was old. And it was not part of the Dead Sea Scrolls because it was found in Mexico. And it was found in modern times.
Writings. That's an amazing thing. And what was in it? Writings. The same writings in the book of Enoch. These overlaps that you have, they were there. This very old book, something interesting. Anyway, so they disclosed these things, mankind, mankind almost killed himself. And in today's society, what makes a person steal and rob from another? Why do they steal and rob from another? Not so they can put food on the table. That's not what they're doing. It's because of greed. They're trying to get more. They're trying to get money from every place they can get it from. And if they have to steal it to make a trade to get the money, they will. Now, what they do with that money, a lot of them, they go and buy drugs. Uh, Azazel taught um, uh, root cutting. He taught about pharma, right? Pharmaceutical products, things that can get you all messed up in the head. He taught about those things as something. And then people began to corrupt themselves in the knowledge of the watchers. It continues. It says everything was corrupted. Azazel is going to be thrown right to the fire. The watchers disclosed uh, knowledge to men, and God desired that men be healed of that disclosure of that knowledge. I mean, continue to read. And he says, he says this, he says, And the whole earth has become corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel, to him ascribe all sin. And to Gabriel, the Lord said, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication, and the children of the watchers from amongst men, and cause them to go forth. That term, cause them to go forth, means force their spirits out of their bodies. You're going to have to force their death. Cause them to go forth. Send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle. God does it. You find this all throughout the word of God. How that God would pit evil against evil to destroy itself. All the time God did this. You know, I read this out of the book of Enoch and somebody contested this highly. That's not the way God works. And then we started reading in the Old Testament. It was just plainly stated the exact same way. God caused one city to go against another city. Isn't that something? And they, you know, a lot of people contest these things. They simply don't know it. You start reading these things in depth and you'll start to get the whole picture. The Lord has always been doing something in deliverance has always been the plan for you guys. And the Lord said unto Michael, go and bind Semyaza. Now, you guys know who Semyaza was, right? He's the one that convinced him to fall in the first place. And he's also described as being the one that was in the garden with Eve. Do you guys know that? Semyaza was. And his associates who have united themselves with a the woman, so they have defiled themselves with him and all of their uncleanness. And where their sons have slain one another, and they have seen destruction of their beloved ones. Bind them fast for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth. Now it says 70 generations. There's a specific number on this, just like there are 70 shepherds that were assigned to the earth. And those 70 shepherds, save one, would be doomed because God required things of them to do and they, well, they took too many. They, they began to indulge in their assignment, taking too many people in the wrong direction. But he already forecast this. All of this is in the book of Enoch. It's, it's been unfolding for all this time. And there's not been one thing missed. The Lord said unto Michael, go and bind some Yaz and his associates who have united themselves with women so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And where their sons have, have slain one another, they shall have seen the destruction of their beloved ones. Bind them fast for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth. I, I find that most curious. To, to, it says to take these things, bind them fast for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation till the judgment that is forever and ever be consummated or be completed in those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire and to the torment and prison in which they shall be confined forever. And whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from thenceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations. Did you hear that? So the, the initial punishment, the place of punishment was for the fallen angels, not for you. But here it says, whoever binds themselves or agrees with the work of these things is going to the same place they are. That's why people encounter demons and dark spirits in the earth. That's why. Yet 37 says, where the valleys of the earth at that time are at the bottom of the ocean now, that's right. And do you know where most of these lights come from? Most of the silly lights in the sky come from the oceans. They come from and return to the oceans. These things were only to be bound 70 generations and until the consummation took place. Well, that consummation is called the end times, the times we live in right now. My goodness, did you know that? Hope you knew that.
It says, and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and of the children of the watchers, because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wrong from the face of the earth and let every evil work come to an end. And the plant of righteousness, of truth appear, and it shall prove a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in the truth and the joy forevermore. And then all the righteous escape and shall live till they beget thousands of children. And all the days of their youth and their old age shall they complete in peace. That, that's pretty, always a promise of the deliverance of the righteous. But clearly an element was introduced into mankind that gave him further corruption. And it was caused by some yaws of the same one who was involved with the garden incident with Eve in the form of a serpent, which actually stands for something other than what most people think it is. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about that. We'll do that later. And then shall the whole earth be tilled in righteousness, and shall be planted with the trees, and be full of blessing. And all desirable trees shall be planted on it, and they shall plant vines on it. And the vine which they plant thereon shall yield wine in abundance. And as for all the seed which is sown thereon, uh, each measure of it shall bear a thousand, and each measure of olives shall yield ten presses of oil, and cleanse the earth from all oppression, and from all unrighteousness, and from all sin, and from all godlessness, and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth destroy from all the face of the earth. And all the children of men shall become righteous, and all nations shall offer adoration and shall praise me, and all shall worship me, and the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement, and from all sin, and from all punishment, and from all torment, and I will never again send them upon it generation to generation forevermore. 